Here I have a table that forms part of my report. I'm showing the company's performance in terms of turnover sales and EBIT for previous year, the year before, previous year actual and budget, and it's split by region. Now, if I didn't want to specifically direct the reader's attention to any part of this report, but just show its performance, I don't need these symbols. I can remove them. But let's say my aim is to show the reader the regions where I performed much better than I budgeted for and the regions where I performed worse than I budgeted for. And as I mentioned to you before, I generally don't like these color collages where everything is green or red. So I have introduced a threshold. I only get a red symbol if the difference is greater than minus 15 and I get the green symbol if my difference is bigger than plus 15. Otherwise, just leave it empty, don't do anything. For EBIT, I've added a different threshold. This obviously is dynamic, so if for Europe, let's say I performed much worse, I have 500, I get the red symbol. If I performed kind of the same, I get no symbol. And obviously, if I'm much higher than my budget, I get the green symbol. Getting symbols in your tables is actually really easy. And a lot of people find it easier than conditional formatting, or maybe a bit more intuitive because they're controlled by formulas. Whereas in conditional formatting, you actually have to go to the feature conditional formatting to see what type of formatting and what the formulas behind it are. Symbols are pretty much just text. They're text that are copied and pasted or they are in a cell reference embedded in formulas. You get symbols by going to insert symbol. And the symbols that I generally use are pretty much the same. You can see them here in my recently used symbols. A lot of them can be found in the font Arial. And you can either go down and skim down there, or you can, in the subset, select arrows, get the faster. So you can see these arrows here. And if I go a bit down, you can see this type of arrows and the square that I'm using. To get your symbol in your Excel sheet, you just click on the one that you want and you insert it. I had my mouse here, it inserted it there. If I want also this symbol and I insert it, it's right there. Now I can use these symbols the way I use text. I can I mean, remove them like I would with text. I can make a formula and say, quotations, I'm writing text, so I need the quotation marks, I say hello and I connect to the cell. I could also copy and paste it in like I would text. So I can say hello and paste control V my symbol. And there I have that. I can change the color of symbols the same way I change the color of fonts. So if I go to home and put this red, it's red. Obviously, if I'm referencing the cell and it's red, it's not going to be red. If I do it like this, it's not going to be red because it's a formula now. So if I really want to change the color of this, I have to change the font color of the whole cell. So as you can see, using symbols, is just like using any type of text. Now, how do I get it to look like this? Let me just copy this data and paste it in a new sheet and we can do this all from scratch. I wanna have my symbols here and here, the same way you saw in the example. First, step that I usually do is I insert the symbol that I want. So it was this one and I insert it somewhere in my sheet. Then as a second step, 
I am going to use a formula. I would say if my actual minus my budget value is less than zero, basically if it's negative, then show me the symbol, otherwise show me nothing. This is an example of a case where I'm not using a threshold. I'm just saying if it's negative, then put the symbol, otherwise put nothing. Okay, I'm planning to copy this down and I'm referencing my cell where my symbol is in. So I have to make sure I fix it with F4 before I copy this down. Let's see if it works. Okay, so in this case, that's fine. And in this case, that's fine. Here, I just do the same thing, except that I need to say if my actual minus my budget is greater than zero, then show me the symbol, otherwise show me nothing. And if I want to make sure that I'm also covering them being identical, so if my difference is equal to zero, I can add that here as well. I can say is greater than or equal to zero, show me the symbol. Now to bring them really close together, I will double click my column. I can also make these smaller if I want. To make them smaller, I have to make them have a smaller font. Then I will color this column red. So the font should be red. And for this column, I would like the font to be green. That's pretty much it. Now, if I wanted to add my threshold, it's basically the same steps, except that I would say if my difference is less than minus 15, if that's my threshold. In this case, I would say if my difference is greater than 15. So in this case, my absolute difference is within my 15 range. This is just one example of using symbols in a table, but you get the idea that symbols are actually just text. To color them the way you want, you can change the font color. And to get this conditional formatting impact without actually using conditional formatting, you can put them in two separate columns and make them really thin just beside each other that people don't even realize they are separate columns. In the next example, I'm going to show you how we can use conditional formatting to highlight specific areas in our table.